Nathan Wrigley from the WP Builds podcast reached out to me recently and asked me if I'd like to check out his new plugin. Now, I love seeing what talented people are working on, so I obviously said, yes, please send me a copy. Today, I'm going to give you a quick run through of the plugin AB Split Test and show you the basics of how it works and offer my thoughts on the plugin and things that I feel could be improved upon. Now, first of all, what are AB Split Tests? So if you're new to AB Split Testing, let me just briefly tell you what it is and why you may want to consider trying it out for yourself. If you have a sales page with a hero section, a call to action, you'll probably come across occasions where you need to test different sales copy to see which converts visitors into buyers or subscribers more consistently. Using AB Split Testing, you can set up two or more different calls to action, and then you could randomly display those to visitors and track which has the higher conversion rate. And then when finished, you could set that as the default option. Now I use a similar method for testing YouTube thumbnails for different designs and different text over a short period of time. And then when it's finished, I'll activate the better of those two options. It really helps to take the guesswork out of things. Okay, so let's just jump into WordPress and see how all of this works. Before we start taking a look at how to work with AB split test, let's just take a quick look at some of the features, the use cases, and ultimately one of the most important factors, the pricing. So features, what do we have? It could be set up in a few minutes and in all honesty with my testing, once you understand the flow of how this works, it is very, very simple and easy to set up. Set and forget, well, it can do that. You can set up your AB split test and then you can let it run in the background, delivering different versions to different users at different times. And then you can monitor their reactions to find out which is the best from those tests. And as you can see, it's also built to work with Beaver Builder, Elementor, and Gutenberg. Now today I'm gonna to be showing you Insight Elementor, but if you wanna see the Gutenberg version, you can take a look at the overview video that's on the AB Split Tests website. Now when it comes to use cases, there are quite a few different reasons on why you may want to use an AB Split Test. Things like call to actions. Is the message that you're giving out, the call to action, the buttons that you're using, the color schemes and so on, are they grabbing people's attentions? You can try this AB Split Test in to find out which is going to give the best results. Your copy, you can find out, does a particular heading or particular call to action, does it work? You know, is your copy really grabbing the attention? If not, you could change it to something that works better. And again, split testing is incredibly useful for that. Navigation and design, you know, pretty much self-explanatory. Is your navigation something that's a bit too complex or a little bit too simplistic, not getting people to where they want? Well, you can test to find out what's happening there. And the same kind of thing goes with the design aspect of it. And finally, we have the pricing. As you can see, there are a couple of price options and starting at basically $97 for a single site. Now you may be considering, you know, is this something that's a little too expensive? I think it's one of those areas that comes down to what you're trying to achieve. If you are trying to make money via a website and you're not necessarily a good marketer or you just don't really know what's gonna resonate with your particular target audience, you could potentially save yourself a boatload of money by using some form of A-B split testing to find out what message or messages work the best. And then you can find out what converts the best and then you can just specify those are the things you're gonna use moving forward. However, if you don't A-B split test, you are basically going in blind. You don't really know then if potential customers are being lost because they're not resonating with the message, the design, the content, the call to action, whatever it is that you're putting out there. So this is one of those things that just gives you a little bit of light in the dark. If you work with clients, again, it could be one of those things you could recoup your costs quite quickly and easily. But as with most things, pricing is subjective and you kind of have to offset how much could you potentially save or make by integrating something like this into your workflow, into your design, into your projects. So now that we've seen the different aspects of the plugin itself. Let's take a look at how we'd use the plugin. We'll set some things up, see the kinds of results you're going to get out of it. Now I've been running a simple test myself where I've been just testing the plugin out and you can see I've got one here called Hero Test Results. The information it's going to give us, we've got the conversion URL, so you can put that, that'll be listed inside there when you have multiple conversions. You've got then the visits and what was being shown. So you can see we've got one called default, one called blue. And this is just the name that you give it when you create your AB split test. You can see we've got six visits for the default, six, sorry, seven visits for the blue. In other words, that's shown up six and seven times respectively to viewers. 
The conversions, how many conversions based upon which was being shown. So you can see, even though that was shown six times, it only converted four times, but it gives a conversion ratio of 66.67% on the overall conversion we have there. And then we've got blue, which is displayed seven times and only converted two times, which gives it a lower conversion rate. So just using these results, you would suggest that the, the default would be the better option. But obviously with anything like this, you want to run this for a longer period of time so you can get more relevant data. You may want to run it for like about 14 days, depending upon the amount of traffic you have going through your site to give you a real understanding of the figures that are being sort of displayed, the interactivity, the conversion rates, and all those kinds of useful pieces of information. If we click and go into this, we'll find out even more info. So you can see the variation. And again, it tells us this, we need more data because this experiment is running, but it hasn't been running very long. So they can see the recommendation is for seven days, but up to you how long you want to run it based upon the traffic. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could reset these results. You may have tweaked something and you don't want to start the, the test all over again. You want to leave everything built out. You just want to try out your new version. Well, you could reset those results and start again. We've also got then different kinds of conversion modes. We've got conversion module and the URL. Now for this example, we're gonna to stick to the conversion module because this is the easiest one to work with. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. And you can see we've got targeting and you can put in UTM parameters if you want to, to sort of set this up in a much more useful fashion where you can grab a lot of data. You know, I don't really deal with UTM sources too much, but I'm sure if you do, you know, you want to track things like Google, Facebook and so on, where traffic's coming from and all those kinds of good things, it is built into this particular plugin. And then you can see we can enable tracking for the following user role. So if you were an administrator, then you don't want to track yourself as you move around the site and testing things out. You want to limit that. And the same may go for editors and authors and contributors. You may just want subscribers, customers, if you're working with something like WooCommerce installed and so on, logged out users, all those kinds of useful bits of info. So you can restrict exactly who can actually interact with this and trigger those results. Then you've got autocomplete, which, you know, we're going to leave that as it is. I'm not going to worry too much about that side of things. But obviously, take your time, have a little read through, see what's relevant to you and how you want to set your A-B split tests up. Okay, so let's create a new split test. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and say new A-B test. Now click on there and now we're going to give just some basic info. And you can see this is the same info we just saw when we opened up that already running example, you know, the conversion module, etc, etc, etc. So we just need to fill out some real basic info here to get this up and running. So let's start off by filling out the name of this. And we're just going to keep this really super simple. We're just going to call this June AB test, just so I know what month it is that I'm running. Once we've done that, you can see we can choose the type of conversion we're going to use. We're going to use the conversion module because that is the module we can use directly inside the page editor element, or it just makes the whole process super simple. And you'll see that when we start to build the page out. Everything else I'm going to leave set in the targeting area. And we're going to set this up to be things like customer, uh, logged out users, subscribers. We're going to leave everything to do with administering and managing the site. We'll leave those out completely. Other than that, we're going to leave everything as it is. And we'll hit publish. So that'll be our new test created. So we come back and take a look at all tests. You can see that's inside there, but we've got no data because we haven't done anything other than create the test. So the next thing we need to do now is twofold. We need to create the design with the AB split test displayed on it. And we also need to create the conversion page. Now the conversion page is basically, it has a little block inserted into it that tracks the conversions from the previous page or any other page you want to send to it. So first of all, we're going to set that up. So we're going to do, we're going to come over to our pages. We're going to add new, and we're just going to call this conversion page. So we can say June conversion page. Okay. So we'll just publish that page. And once that's published, we're simply going to come in and edit that with Elementor. Like I say, you don't need to use Elementor. This works perfectly fine with Gutenberg, but because I'm more of an Elementor based channel, it makes more sense for me to demonstrate how we would use it with that plugin. Okay, so this is going to be our sort of success page. This is the page that we click to go to. So this may be a product, it may be a service, it may be something like that, that you want to track the conversions of. So to do that, all we need to do is drop in the relevant module. So if we come over to the left hand side, we just type in conversion or start typing that in, you can see we've got a B test conversion. So what we're going to do is going to drag and drop that onto our page and it puts this little area inside there. 
Now, this is going to be completely invisible to page users. When they land on this, they won't see anything. This is just a placeholder so you can see something's running when you're editing pages. You'd still put your success message or whatever it is you wanted to put on this page on there. But what we need to do is just tell it what conversion we want to work with. So you can see on the left hand side, we only have a couple of really simple options. The AB test, in other words, what test are we linking this conversion page to? So we're going to click to drop that down. You can see there's my original one that I showed you the demo of earlier on. We've just created the June AB test. We're going to select that. You can see that now pulls up and tells us exactly what's going on there. So it's nice to quickly and easily see what test this conversion page is actually running. And then you can see the conversion type. We've got on page load and we've got on element click. Now we're going to set this to on page load because we want to fire off this conversion when the page loads. So that's what we want to do with this example. And then you can do anything you want. You can drop in a sort of success message if you want to on there. You know, so I'll just drop something really simple in like so and so. Say thank you for clicking just so I can see there's something on the page. So let's just save that page. Once we've done that, we're then ready to create the page that's going to be our A-B test. So we're going to exit out of this to our dashboard, come back and create a new page. So you're just going to add a new page in. And like I say, we're going to keep this super simple. So we're just going to call this my A-B test June and we'll just publish that page and then we can open up Elementor and start working with the design we want to work with. So let's say we were going to use a nice hero image and we wanted to test our copy inside there. We'll start by just doing just that. We'll create our first hero section. So we're going to click drop in our design and we're just going to quickly set this up to be in keeping with what I would expect to do with something like this. So we'll drop an image into the background so we've got something visual to look at and we'll say we use this particular image. That looks fine. We'll set this to be styled the way that we want. And once that's all done, we can then just put our message inside there. So I'm going to quickly run through this to get the first one set up. Okay, so there's our first call to action. So all I've done is just create a background, heading, button, nothing else. Nothing has been set up to work with the AB conversion test at all yet. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And this is the important thing. You have to choose what element it is you want to include as part of your AB test. So for this example, I want the entire hero section to be the AB test. So it doesn't matter what's inside it, the hero section is going to be that test. So what we're going to do is we're going to click to edit the section to make sure that's the active section. We're going to come over to the advanced tab and we have a new section inside there called AB split test. We've got the experiment and we've got the version or variation name. So that's it. That's all there is to it. So the first thing we need to do is choose the split test. So again, we're going to choose that June AB test. Then we're going to give it a variation name. And this is what you're going to kind of track in the background. So depending upon the number of variations you may create, then each one has to have a unique name. But it's recommended that the very, very first one, the first call to action, the first A-B test, whatever it is, is always named default. Now underneath you can see it says by using default, this will call this version to run first unless otherwise targeted. So that's kind of the, the, the as you know, suggest, the default, that's going to be the first one that would run each time. So just bear that in mind, first one called default. Okay, so we've created that. We now need to just do one other thing, and that's link it through the relevant clickable item to go through to the conversion page that we just created. Because we've only got the button that's a clickable item, even though this is all wrapped inside that A-B split test, clicking that button will send it off to that conversion page and also track where this is the default, whether it's going to be the blue or the green or whatever it is you kind of name it consecutively. So let's just select the button. Once that's active, we're going to make sure we've got the link inside there. I'm going to just type in June, and it's our June conversion page. So we're going to select that as the link through to, you know, from this button kind of thing. Okay, so that's the first of the A-B split tests set up. Now, obviously, we need to create a second variation. So what we're going to do is we're going to just click, we're going to right-click, and we're going to say duplicate. That will give us an identical copy underneath. And now we can just change the things that we want to change inside there to make it different. So we may want to change the name of their call to action. So we're just going to call this call to action 2. We're going to change the, the button, for example. We'll change the color of that. So we'll come over to the styles and we'll just change that from red and we'll set that to be blue. And obviously the link that the button takes you through to, that's going to stay the same. 
We're going to change the background image as well. So we come to our style section and we'll change this image and we'll put a completely different one inside there. Insert that. So you can see we now have a totally different call to action hero section. But we need to do one very important thing and that's change the name of it. Otherwise, the AB split test is going to keep registering the same information no matter which one is being displayed. So we're going to select it. So that's the entire section selected back over the advanced section. The experiment is perfectly fine. We just need to change the variation name and we're just going to call this blue. And we'll put underscore button. You can call this whatever you kind of wanted. It's just a naming convention for it. So the first one's called default, which is going to be the default hero section you'll see. The second one is called blue button. And now we're going to hit update on there. And providing everything is set up exactly as we need it to be, when we start testing these where we're logged out, obviously remember we've set this up so an administrator, you won't see it working correctly. We need to be in incognito mode or we need to be a non-logged in user on a clean browser, for example. So let's take a look at this now. Now it may take a couple of runs before we'll see the changes because obviously this is completely randomized. This isn't a case of show one to one person, show another to another and then back and forth, back and forth. It is totally randomized. So a blank incognito mode window, dropped in the URL to that page and we'll just hit enter on there and you can see we get the blue button, which is quite cool because I was expecting to get the red button. So there's one thing and then we click on this to register that conversion. Remember, just by accessing and landing on the page doesn't mean anything. We're not tracking the landing on the page, we're tracking the effectiveness of the call to action in this example, the result that we want. So we're gonna click on that that registers it and you can see now, thank you for clicking because that's gone over to our conversion page. You can see that little module we inserted is completely invisible. No one will see that. And depending upon what your conversion page is there for, you just registered that conversion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close that down. We're gonna open up another incognito window. So we'll open that again and we'll try the same thing again. We'll drop in that URL and we'll see if this registers Again, the blue one. So we're gonna try this a couple more times now until we get to the red button. Now for simplicity's sake, I've opened up a totally different browser where I'm not logged in and we're just gonna hit enter on there and we'll see what comes up this time. And there we go, there's our red button on a different browser. And again, if we click to register that click, it'll take us through and it'll show us, thank you for clicking, you know, whatever your conversion page includes. So that's how you set things up. That's how you get all working. Now, if we come back out of this and go back to our dashboard, we should see that that started to register those clicks. So we come into our AB tests and there's our June AB test. And you can see it shows us default visit once, blue button twice, the conversions and the conversion rate. If we open that up to take a look at the information, again, it tells us we need to have this running longer to collect more data and it just shows us the results and so on and so forth. So it is really, really simple to set up. Once you've kind of got your head around building the process, it is really straightforward. A couple of things I would like to see though. At the moment, it looks like a very early beta from the dashboard side of things. I would love to see more stylized kind of layouts for you know the results and things. Nicer looking charts, information like that, just to give you a more pro level kind of look and feel, especially for the price that's being charged for this. While not extortionate price wise, it is a considerable investment for some people that are new to e-commerce, new to selling online or new to A-B split testing. It's very easy, works well, but I do think there's a little bit of finessing that I think could go on to make it just go up to a slightly more pro look and feel from the dashboard point of view. Other than that though, I think it has a lot of potential. It is super easy, tracks the information really well, works with various different page builders as well as Gutenberg on its own. So what do you think of this? You tell me if this is something you think you could see yourself invest in time, effort and money into, or if you're using something else, let me know what you're using, how it compares to this. I love getting your feedback on how these things work. A-B split testing is one of those areas that can make a massive impact on your ROI or return on investment, especially when you need to optimize various parts of your website, call to actions, or sales process. But what are your thoughts? Do you use A-B split testing yourself? And if so, what are your tools of choice? Drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know your preferences. As always, all of the applicable links are included in the description below, so if you want to check out, you can take a look at those. If you want to learn more by getting more out of WordPress, take a look at the videos you can see on screen next. 
My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.